and welcome to Once More With Feeling, Grimmest Hits, the 10th studio album from Black Label Society. Now, are we talking Grimace as in Grimace from like McDonald's or are we talking Grimace as in just like the most depressing emo album that's totally not emo? Like, I'm confused on the like the basis here. I don't know. I mean, I've tried to do research, but all I can find is like a couple of sentences. Okay, so what you're saying is this might legitimately be yet another McDonald's theme band doing awesome stuff, right? That That's what we're officially stating is because there's no official answer as to what this album is. Obviously, we're listening to Grimace and his greatest hits. I am so on board. I am so on board. Well, if that were if that were the case, I think this album would actually be a bit more interesting. <laughs> You'd be in the corner going, "I love hamburgers." Did it actually did did Grimace speak? I can't remember if Grimace actually had words. I don't know. I'm trying to remember because I know he was the big purple blob. Does he actually speak? I'll have to look this up later. The McDonald's mascots over here never really got that much recognition aside from ronald mcdonald so who knows fair enough i I can't i think grimace actually doesn't speak i think grimace is just a creepy purple blob who eats food Mm -hmm. because a hamburglar does talk kind of i honestly genuinely cannot remember if grimace can speak so anyways back to this album (laughs) yeah so yeah they really need to start putting more information on wikipedia or at least any kind of reputable source yeah for legitimate answers to information because yeah both me and edmund did look into this and on their on their wikipedia page for black label society there is a link for uh this album however it just immediately redirects you back to the black label society wikipedia page because <sighs> fuck you if you want any information <laughs> such as release dates and so on i mean i know yes we can try looking into interviews and whatnot but by the time we've tried looking up the interview i mean this album has been out for over a week now so by this point there should be enough information no no not really apparently we're just stuck in a world full of "Eh, you'll figure it out on your own that that's that's what's going on here so so yeah apparently so so black label society grimace hits it's an album yeah and like you had to tell me that this was not a greatest hits because um full full disclosure i have never really listened to black label society i had my options back in the day because i know they've been around for quite a while never really got into the band so rather than looking them up i just dove into this thinking oh it's a greatest hits until edmund had to inform me no it is not this is not a greatest hits album their their naming is amazingly bad yeah i i mean when i first looked it up it was sort of like oh is this going to be a greatest hits thing but nope new release because fuck logic in naming things then again also fuck having normal natural progression in song sound on this album i mean jesus Christ. oh come on it's not that bad it kind of flows together kind of well, the first two thirds <laughs> flow together. Just, just like our previous reviews we've done together, this album has a has has um uh, it has issues. Yeah, <laughs> but I would say categorically that this has far more issues than Avatar Country had. <laughs> well, yeah, because Avatar Country it was like a pendulum. Yeah. It would start on the left, and you were and you were listening to you know calm, relaxed music. Then it would swing right, and you go pretty heavy. Then it would swing to the middle, and you'd end up in some other world, and so on. This one, for about the first two thirds of the two thirds, stays in roughly the same general genre of music. It it has its own differences, and each one kind of plays with a different concept, but it's all pretty much the same. But once you hit track 9 through 12, you kind of end up in weirdo land and nothing makes sense. And I, and I kind of wanted a razor blade but during that point. Not because, you know, the music was depressing. It's just I was depressed having to listen to it. I mean, I, I, I mean this album, I... Well, let's start with the positives. Let's go positive first. What did you like about the album? What was your? What were the parts that you were happy, joyous... Let's let's start with the good before we just start just raining on this parade. What were what were the parts that made you feel joyous inside, if any? Okay, so 
things that I quite liked, um, like the opening track, um, because you actually listened to it before me, you described it initially sounding a bit like early Godsmack mixed with um, some of Ozzy Osbourne's stuff. I mean, yeah, because Zach Wilde was Ozzy's guitarist for a while, I was able to hear sort of early Black Label Society because I have been listening to them for like a decade and all that sort of thing. And it was sort of like, yeah, this is uh, Godsmack meets Black Label Society. Okay, I'm cool with that. I like Godsmack. I know it. (laughs) Oh, God. I know that might mark me out as a bit of a weirdo because a lot of people seem to not much care for Godsmack, but whatever. I liked a couple of their big hits, but I just couldn't get into Godsmack in general. It's really not my style. Like I like back in the back in the nineties, I was because back then, you know, I had just come out of my adolescence and growing up in rural in a rural part of the United States. And before that, the only real music I'd been listening to was like Doctor Demento style uh, comedy tracks from the sixties and seventies. Uh, then of course a lot of disco, and then you know hair band metal, you know from the eighties. Going from that was a natural progression, of course, into Godsmack and other and other music like that mm. to some degree. But I very quickly grew out of it because I had been moved forward in two decades in roughly one year. So go rural, rural Idaho, actually. Um, going from there to going to Northern California was a big shift in culture and music. And I quickly went forward about two decades in music and realized I just wasn't really into that style of music. So... For a very tiny little window, this was awesome to me. But then after that, I was like, this is just not not good. Not good at all. So, eh. But, but yeah, I when you said that to me, I was sort of like, okay, I like Godsmack. I like Black Label Society. I can get on board with this. So, was, And see, I, I like that first track too. It wasn't bad. It was a good opener. I thought to myself, all right, this is what I'm getting into. I can hang with this. It's not, you know, it's not quite it's not quite what I was expecting. Then again, I wasn't sure what I was expecting. Mm. I was just thinking, it's like, all right, Edmonds in the metal. This should be interesting. He got all excited about this, so this should be a fun, a fun CD. Pop in there, pop it in, listen to the first track, and it was like, all right, well, okay, this this is this is a interesting opener. All right, and then yeah, like I I listened to it. I was kind of get kind of getting into it a little bit. And by the end of the by the end of the track, I kind of forgot I was listening to it because <laughs> it just it just melded into the background. Yeah, I mean the song that followed it, I quite liked because that had a sort of seventies classic rock, deep purple Led Zeppelin kind of feel to it. And see, that's that's nice too. Yeah, yeah. Um, the betrayal that was a good standard Black Label Society song musically but unfortunately that's also to its detriment because it felt very recycled so um all that once shined that felt like an all right acid rock kind of thing (laughs) Uh, uh, well the people who are involved in this probably did plenty of acid so i'm sure i probably it probably just felt just normal to them yeah. Room of Nightmares, I'd say that's one of the stronger tracks on the album, which is funny because it is the shortest one on the album. Oh, wow. It really is, isn't it? Yeah, two minutes and 31 seconds. That is that is really short. Ugh. Um, I Love Unreal, I'd say that is also the standout track of the album. Uh, Disbelief, to be honest, if it had ended there, it would have been a decent EP. See, all the way through up until this point, um, my first listen through, I was working at the time. I was driving around and, you know, picking up and delivering my orders and stuff. Because for for a quick background, I've never mentioned this before, I work out of my car. So listening to music my entire day is pretty much just what I do. I go to, I go and do pick up and pick up and deliveries all the time. Or I'll transport people doing Uber and Lyft. And finding the right tracks for the right day really helps. Um, if I'm driving people around doing like Uber and Lyft, I need to make sure I find an album that's not offensive. So that way no one gets offended or upset or what have you. Mm. I found this found the album up to this point 
perfect for that. It's not offensive. Um, I, as far as I know, there was no swearing. I honestly couldn't tell you because it it kind of melded into a nice, quiet, like good kind of white noise. You know, it just worked. It wasn't. It was not getting in the way. I didn't feel like I had to I had to focus on it. It worked perfectly as background music. So mm. that was up to track eight for me. Yeah. Um. After track eight, well, here's the thing. At least from my perspective, uh, illusions of peace and bury your sorrow. If you switch those two out for be- the betrayal and the only words and just cut it, disbelief is the last track and have it like that, this would be a stronger EP. I like how you're skipping a track intentionally. I know why you're doing it and I'm giggling because I I feel like we're at the very almost at the top of a waterfall and we're about to get to hear a glorious rant because yeah. Okay, um... Avatar Country, when we talked about track three, I went off the deep end. And when I was listening to this album my very first time and track nine popped in, I immediately started to cry. (laughs) And it was not tears of joy. It was just, what on earth am I listening to? It was just so... Oh, it it, kind of just felt like I was taking heroin for the first time, but not joyous heroin. Just the kind of heroin that just makes you morose and sad and just want to just lay there and just kind of cry. Well, wait, wait, hold your horses, because we still need... Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Am I, am I jumping the, am I jumping the boat a little bit? I'm sorry. I'll, I'll back up a little. Yeah, well, you... You said to say the positives first, so we... Oh yes, oh yes, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Because I already said all my positives, because there wasn't a lot to say. I have very few emotions about this album, mostly because it all blended too heavily together for me. Yeah. I was mostly trying to keep you keep you on the, on the straight and narrow, so I'm sorry. I will retreat back to my cave. <laughs> <laughs> right, so we've said the positives. <laughs> Yeah, the positives pretty much boil down to there are okay to decent tracks on this album. None of them are, oh my god, this is amazing. I will immediately play this particular track all the time whenever I want. It's just there are a few good tracks that would be good to play. Okay, I tend to write a lot of Dungeons and Dragons and other sort of roleplay game scenes whilst listening to music. A lot of the songs on this album would be good for that sort of thing if you're just trying to write up downtime scenes where you're just, you've got people, you know, milling about in a bar or something like that. Yeah, I could see that. This is also an album for the first, you know, Probably actually, honestly, for the whole thing, you could probably you could probably get away with this. Uh, if, if you like to jam, you could probably just sit back with a guitar or drums or what have you. Because it doesn't feel like this album focuses on a particular instrument. Mm. It kind of just feels like you can pretty much get involved in anything. So if you've got an instrument and you love to strum along with something or or what have you, this, this feels like an album that'd be perfect for it. Because it doesn't heavily focus on the vocals, and it doesn't heavily focus on any particular instrument. Everyone kind of feels like they're actually part of a group. So if you love to strum, or if you love to basically like rock out with an album, this might be the right album for you, at least you know, as like an entry album. And then obviously then you can kind of go from there. But this, this album feels like that would probably be right up someone's alley yeah it also works really good in, you know as edmund was saying is white noise um i mentioned this earlier if you're looking for something you can just pop in and just kind of just veg out with i called this basically like zen rock is what i kind of just jokingly called it to my girlfriend i was like this is zen rock so i played a bit for her and she she kind of agreed it was not offensive it was relaxing you know it's not the kind of thing obviously you want to play for someone who's you know 95 well unless of course they're a metalhead and i'm sure there's a couple of those rocking out in some some retirement home going and play the Metallica, you know, or what have you. Enter Sandman, you know, as they're walking around with a, with a walker, because sh- that shit's funny. But I'm just saying, this this album would be perfect for the, your average person who wants something a little heavier than you know some like if, you know they're looking for basically for more retro style rather than new age. So it works great for that. I just have to say, after the show, I'm going to have to link you to the heavy metal albums that Christopher Lee was involved in. (laughs) (laughs) Alright. Because 
it is quite glorious and we are talking albums that he was involved in slash recorded all that sort of thing only a few years before his death oh wow like the first one that he released um he was 89 when he did it so oh lord back to the album right so the bad things about this album um okay it ends it's terrible because it ends it should just keep going on until the end of time so it's like a train that just never goes off the cliff that was a joke that was a horrible joke (laughs) um so the bad things about this album well first there is the fact that it is very meandering and kind of fades into the background after a point It's just sort of like, okay, yeah, this is all decent hard rock, but there's nothing to really grab you by the throat and say, you will listen to me. Well, technically speaking, the fact that you spent money on it officially declares that, but... Well, in in theory, technically speaking, I'm sure you can listen to it on, on YouTube. I personally listen to it on Pandora, but in theory... You had to spend money to have your entrance entrance fee. So that's the only thing that's demanding that you listen to it. Mm. Yeah, like, it, it is just white noise. That's that's all this album to me is, is just white noise. Take it or leave it. That's that's all the album is up until track eight. Yeah. After track eight, it quickly shifts from white noise to something drastically different. Because anything you suggest to me apparently now has a catch. Right. Um. Well, first I'll, I'll amp up to it. Because... The two tracks I was saying to switch out, um, the betrayal I was saying to switch out because it is very meh. It doesn't stand out. It It is the most meh of meh songs on this album. <laughs> it is the epitome of a bread sandwich. Yeah. You know, sure, I'm th- in theory it'll sustain you, but really, it's just, it's just bread. It's bread, but it's just bread. Yes. I'll, I'll give you that. Like... Yeah, it, it's it's just white noise. <laughs> you just listen to it and you're like, okay, that that was a song. Thank you. Uh, um, and the only words, ah, oh, it's just a tired, very old and busted, boring country track. It it kind of felt like if Leonard Skinner tried covering Van Morrison. Uh, why why is there country on this album anyways that's that's what i want to know uh, i don't know are they trying to go for the cmas is that what they're trying to do they realize that they just desperately needed to expand their expand their audience because i don't understand what's up with the surge of like metal bands dipping into country because i know the country is now dipping into rap which means rap will eventually start dipping into like uh, polka <laughs> And then Polka will suddenly dip into, like, you know, like, wind chimes. I was going to say Gregorian chant. (laughs) That or, what is it, Hungarian throat singing or whatever the hell it is? Um, It's Mongolian. Mongolian, sorry. Hungarian, Mongolian. Ah, it's the same spot. Hi, Dexter. Anyways. (laughs) That's what what happened. I, I was just thinking of Dexter just, like, groaning into the wind. I'm sorry. And for those of you who don't know who Dexter is, I'm just going to simply just nod and shrug. Anyways. Uh, um, and Nothing Left to Say, the last track on the album. Well, the irony there is that its existence is entirely redundant and could have been wholly cut. There are some, like, okay, the betrayal technically is an ironic song because, of course, it betrays itself. Yeah. The only words is, a, is for whatever reason, a country song. Nothing left to say was unnecessary because there was nothing left to say before it, so... Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of really weird irony in the tracks, and I appreciate that they had to, like, okay, we're doing the grimmest hits. It is the most depressing shit. Absolutely depressing. All of our song titles must now show off that we've gone fucking emo. But our music isn't emo. We're not entirely sure what our music is, because uh, I don't even know. Like, did they lose a bet? (laughs) <laughs> and i don't mean that in a mean way i don't mean that in a mean way i'm not saying that there's i'm not saying that they're bad i'm just asking was this album or at least portions of this album the results of losing a bet that's that's my question because some of this feels like they lost a bet yeah some of this feels like it's fine but some of this feels like they lost a bet and they owed a guy and that guy wrote a song or wrote a wrote a catch to a song and they had to include it or else they had to give up their firstborn or something. Like, Rumpelstiltskin somehow was involved. 
that's what I want to know is was that the case? And if that is the case, blink twice and we'll send in we'll send in uh, negotiators to get you out. <laughs> we'll get you out, bro. We'll get you out. Cuz that's what this feels like to me. It just feels like they lost a bet and that that they could have done so much better, at least in par- in, in parts. Yeah. In parts it works, in parts it doesn't work. I, I don't think I, I like this is yet another album. I would never reach it reached out beforehand and after having listened to it I don't feel like I've, I'm owed anything, obviously, but I still feel kind of like I wasted my time mm. that I could have been listening to something else like, you know, As She Lays Dying or whatever. So anyways, happy music. The happiest of all musics. I mean, the thing is, I purely picked this album because I was sort of like, OK, let's go for an album that's coming out that week and it'll keep things going. Oh, Black Label Society's releasing an album. I like them. Let's go with that. <laughs> So what you're saying is your taste in music is dreadful, and I ha- I should be picking the albums I work on. I work with you. Got it. All right. Well, from now on, we're going to only be picking albums that came out in 1973. My childhood. <laughs> oh God. Uh, I I think what I'm going to do is just go through all the albums from now on, and any singles that have been released, listen to those, so that I at least have some sort of idea what I'm letting myself in for. (laughs) Uh, Stay tuned for episode three of Two Idiots Talk About Bullshit. The album, The Lost Tracks of Barbra Streisand. I don't know. (laughs) Oh, God. Oh no. Uh, which would be worse, Barbara Streisand or Olivia Newton John? Ooh. A duet album. Oh! You're trying to give people strokes? No, just. just. just depression. <laughs> I'm trying to help Zoloft. Apparently their sales are down. But anyway. We have we have been ambling up to this. Now, we did touch on it a little bit a few minutes ago, but. The time has come to say about what is easily the worst song on this album. Would you like me to go get the razor now or or do you want me to wait until after you're done screaming? Oh, Oh no, no. I do not give in to the song. The song gives in to me. Uh, yeah. Welcome to, yeah. Welcome to Edmund's Breakdown. I'm your host. This is Edmund here and... I'm gonna I'm gonna go get the uh I'm gonna go get the straight jacket. I'll be I'll be back in a few minutes. Edmund, behave. <laughs> oh god. Okay, so track nine. That day that heaven had gone away. Which oh dear god, the title alone is so emo it gives it, I I I I developed eye makeup just reading the title. <laughs> <laughs> oh god just reading the title i suddenly had eye makeup i had nail varnish on i i had skinny jeans i don't know where any of it came from but that title alone <laughs> oh i can actually see all this happening too right as you're listening to it like you slowly morph like some weird kind of werewolf slash emo kid and it's not even emo music. It's just like the worst kind of country. Yeah. It's the it's the kind of country where you're thinking to yourself, okay, I appreciate that Johnny Cash could write this style of song, and it was good. Few other people could. You've you've you just no, 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 just just no. I I mean I. <laughs> I mean, you absolutely detest the king welcomes you to Avatar Country. <laughs> yes. Like, okay, I'm pretty sure. Let me pull up our, our conversation we had while I was while I was listening to this. Because I believe I was sending it to you privately, correct? Yeah. I think I did. Or was I sending it to you? Okay, there we go. Track six, track four. Okay, so I said that, this is what I stated. This is what I was saying at the in the moment. I said, okay, track nine is mystifying. I need a razor. <laughs> that that's all I could say, because I didn't want to I didn't want to ruin the track for Edmund, because I was thinking, well, maybe I'm just overreacting. Maybe I'm just I'm feeling just just off. Cause you know, I was sitting there, I had just done a delivery and I was listening to this track going, Well, tonight's been been a good night to go commit suicide and run my car into a utility pole. So <laughs> just listening to this <laughs> listening to this song. I, I couldn't do anything but just sit there and stare at my phone as it played the music through my through my car stereo, thinking, did I, did, 
did, did it change albums? I had to log back into Pandora and double check the album twice to make sure I was listening to the correct track. Just blown away by the massive shift in tone. I mean, we go from track eight, which was, I mean, the whole album is pretty, you know, it's not exactly screaming the praises of joy and how wonderful, like, Fruitcake is. Instead, it's more along the lines of, like, it's fairly depressing music overall. It, none of it's really happy, which I guess goes in tone with the whole grim concept. But this one goes from grim to just straight, There's no reason to live anymore. Cyanide takes too long. You, what you really should do is you should simply take your esophagus, rip it out, and just inspect the inside of it as you slowly watch your vision dim. That's kind of what this track essentially tries to tell you, which I appreciate a good suicide track, but this is not the al this is not the album for it. And I sure as hell would never want this played at my actually wait this should be played at my funeral. New idea, play this song at my funeral. Play this song at my funeral. There we go. I now officially have my burial track. Play this song. I'll have people joining me. Thank you, Edmund. You've now improved my life. Oh, uh, in all seriousness, what I have to say on this song. <clears throat> this is one of the few occasions where I'll just be reading directly from my notes because my notes say it all. So here it goes. <clears throat> Fuck this fucking steaming pile of fucking shit. Fuck this mewling, whining, morose, disgusting, pathetic excuse for music. This song took a dump in my brain, stabbed me in the soul, and gave me a wet willy for good measure. Fuck it. Fuck it all. This is what happens when Pat Boone tries to write for BLS. God, this song sucks. Well, tell me how you really feel. <laughs> I didn't like it. <laughs> Are you sure, Edmund? Do you need a hug? Point to me where on your ear this song touched you. <laughs> yeah, it, it was a terrible song. It was it was bad. It it was pretty bad. It was uh, it just it didn't yeah it just, no just take the song, put it inside a lead filled container, put the lead filled container on the inside of a cement block, and simply bury it at the bottom of, of the Marianas Trench, and then drop a nuke just to make sure that it stays gone for good. The fish don't need to live. Fuck the fish. It's their fault anyways. <laughs> I mean, I know I sometimes have a tendency to go hyperbolic, but this song, it's just, I think the perfect term, it's coined by another reviewer, is Brodushian. <laughs> wow. Brodushian. That's, that's a, that's a mouthful is what that is. That's coming me in waves. I'm now actually tasting different things just from just from having to say that word. Wow. And that that actually kind of fits, doesn't it? Yeah. It's the sort of country music that, you know, you could imagine a band like say Florida Georgia Line singing it. Just wow. My brain's still stuck on the word. I'm now going to associate that word with this band and that's terrible because i'm sure their body of work doesn't really fit the word but now i'm gonna unfair her from this point forward i'm gonna unfairly categorize this band as brodushian well yeah that's the thing that's why it's so interminably infuriating so there you go this this song is by no means representative of Black Label Society's body of work. I mean, if you want good BLS albums, Stronger Than Death, The Blessed Hell Ride, Mafia, Shot to Hell, Order of the Black, any of those albums, they're great albums. 1919 Eternal. George Goes to the Zoo. Any of these albums would work. Okay, that last one probably isn't true, but anyways. So that's why I have never heard them do such a left turn like this. And it's so aggravating because it's sort of like, what the, f why? There is literally no reason. We know for a fact you're not going to get any of the country market. We know that you're a hard rock heavy metal outfit. You're not going to get any country fans who aren't also hard rock and heavy metal fans. That's not true. Obviously, they've got a big Willie Nelson fan group that's just boiling, just ready to come out of come out of the woodwork. You know, they're so tired of listening to, you know, songs about how great pot is and how wonderful it would be if everyone drove in biodiesel vehicles. Now they're looking for a suicide pack song, and that's what they got. They got a suicide pack song out of black label society because 
That's just exactly what country music's been yearning for. Another depressed band constantly trying to cash in on the suicide block of rednecks. I- I'm I'm very confused. I'm genuinely confused about that concept. <laughs> uh, I grew up in country land. There aren't that many suicidal people. Annoyed people? Sure. Angry people? Definitely. But I don't see a lot of them walking around with black makeup and black lipstick while they're out there tending to the cows. It just doesn't happen much. I'm not going to completely generalize. I'm sure there's a couple emo ranchers and emo farmers, but that market is incredibly niche. Like, incredibly niche. Mm. It's it's kind of along the lines of just how many people are out there who listen to polka while also dancing on fire. I'm sure there's a few, but that market is an incredibly small market, so... Yeah. Anyway, um, ultimately, I think if you feel you absolutely have to listen to this album, just look it up on Spotify or Pandora or YouTube or whatever. It's honestly a bit of a waste. Unless you're looking for a white noise album, at which point purchase it and enjoy it. Yeah. If you like, if you want some good background music, then by all means buy it but i strongly advise at the very least listening to it on youtube spotify pandora whatever uh last fm if you feel so inclined um just using some sort of music playing service before buying it because it is one of those you should test it out because you don't want to be in the position of like when I got the Steel Panther album and that was painful. Um, but yeah, uh, final thoughts, uh, score, that sort of thing. Oh, uh, let's see. It's not as the whole album is not as terrible as it's being made out to be. We're both just really raw and sore over the pretty much the last four so four tracks. Well, I'm Ron so over the last four tracks. Um, it made for good relaxation music. I did enjoy the first eight tracks to the point where none of them were really speaking out to me in in like, a, oh my god, track four was amazing. I just really love the guitar hook in track six or what have you. But at the same time, it didn't speak out to me. And that's kind of a good thing because it makes for a good background track. I love the fact that I could just basically listen to it and not feel overwhelmed, not have to concentrate on the music. It just made for good filler music, which is perfect in my line of work. So if that's the kind of thing you're looking for is something to be able to just throw on and know that 95% of the people who listen to the music in your car are not going to be upset, then it's a good, a good CD. On the other hand, you'll still have some people go, Oh my god, you're listening to blankety blank. Play more EDM or play more country or play more Mongolian throat singing or whatever. Then obviously you'll have issues there. But most people will just sit back and go, All right, this is fine. When you hit track 9 through 12, uh, results may vary. So... I'm sure there's I'm sure there's a diehard fans like this is the song I have been waiting for my entire life. But most people are probably going to listen to those last four tracks and go uh, skip, 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 skip. Oh, we're back to the beginning of the album. All right, that's cool. And just let it go back to playing again. So uh, my final my final score for the album is about two and a half, three, just based around the fact that it worked great for just background filler. It's not amazing. Um, I'm definitely not going to be recommending this to any of my friends because none of my friends are into this kind of music. But eh, it wasn't it wasn't the point where it was like you should never listen to this because well I'm sure people out there at least at least at least there's at least some audience for everything on this tra- on this album. I feel very horrible for the people who love track nine because seek help. But everybody else who listens to this, listens to this album and finds something they love, then kudos because it's not bad. It's just two and a half three three stars yeah yeah somewhere in the neck of the woods yeah i'm in agreement two and a half three stars because it's not a terrible album it we have been very down on very specific bits of the album but as a whole yeah it's it's fine this is fine it's fine this is fine <laughs> sounds like that's that's exactly the mantra that everybody has said for the last two or three years in this whole world this is fine. As the house burns down around them, this is fine. This album, this is fine. Pretty much just just overall everything, this is fine. So if you want an album that pretty much encompasses the last few years of everywhere on this planet, that's what this album is. Some parts are good. Some parts are not so good. Overall, this is fine. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, 
So that's it for this episode. Uh, next episode, ooh, let's go. F- shall shall I go for something that? Because I don't know if Pierce will be back next week or whether it, I'll have to go. Billy, I need you again. Oh no! It's so depressing to have to do these reviews with you because you keep picking terrible fucking albums. Pick something nice. Pick something enjoyable. Pick something that my aching old soul can actually listen to and go, wow. This is this is good. Where has this been all my life? Instead, you keep finding albums where I go, wow, this is... Wow, where has this been all of my life? <laughs> Find more thriller, less filler, man. I know it exists. I've listened to it before. Oh, the glorious good albums of the old days. Now, to be fair, you did enjoy the majority of Avatar Country. It's just track three really threw you that much. Yeah, I really hated track three. Like the rest of the album wasn't bad. I actually did enjoy it. I I'm being I'm being overly cruel. I did enjoy the vast majority of, of Avatar Country. And to be honest, this album that we're talking about here, uh, what is it, Grimmest Hits, I will very likely actually play that in my car from time to time because A, it's been downloaded on my phone, so it's free game, and B, it really will work as good white noise for in my car when I'm driving people around. So, in all fairness included, I will actually use this, this CD in my personal life. I just will not be reaching for it for myself. It's mostly so that way I can keep the little old ladies from getting really pissed off that I'm playing, you know, death metal in my car, you know, three o'clock in the afternoon Mm. so that having been said be gentle or else i will pull up an album and i'll force you to review an apolka album with me if i can well i'll put it like this if you know of a polka album that can be reviewed i'm all up for that challenge accepted Mind you, they're all old. Everything everything I listen to polka-wise is quite old, so it's a little hard to put that together. But I'm sure I could find something if I really want to put my mind to it. Well, even polka metal bands are fair game. Yeah, the problem is there's not too many of those. There's just that really the one I can think of off the top of my head. What's the one you can think of? It's been forever since I've actually, actually looked these guys up. I occasionally listen to them from time to time. The only one I can think of is Contrast. I think that might be the one I'm thinking of. Ah, well. Either way. Okay, so, um, with next episode, I am about to decide what the next artist and album we shall be reviewing is. On the roll of a die! A seven-sided die, to be exact, because there's only seven artists that I can be asked with investigating, so fuck it. We're doing it that way. So... But... But that, that, there's no seven shapes. There's no seven-sided three-dimensional shape. How have you created the thing that does not exist? Um, it's, uh, it's a pentagonal prism, basically. Oh, okay, so they created a fictitious shape. Okay. Well, I, mean, I guess technically it's not fictitious because it physically exists, but my brain does not accept seven-sided shapes. It's not acceptable. It's not a traditional three-dimensional shape. Okay, so next artist is... Orphaned Land with their album Unsung Prophets and Dead Messiahs. Wow, so it's an inspirational tape. Well, it should be interesting considering it's an Israeli heavy metal band. Oh, sign me the fuck up. I am down for this. (laughs) Right, so... See, your co-host doesn't exist anymore. I'm taking his place. I'm officially just muscling, muscling my way in. You know, we've only been talking now in the unedited review here of almost 53 minutes. That means I'm obviously more awesome than him. No offense. So thus, I'm taking his spot. It's mine. I'm taking it. I'm putting my fist down. It's my spot. I'm doing Israeli heavy metal. I'm sorry. It's mine now. Mine! Uh, Anyway. No Pierce. It's mine. (laughs) Well, he was saying that probably be easier for him to be a guest host at this point because his shifts are going a bit overboard, so whatever. Um, Yay! So you guys get to deal with me more often. Sorry? Anyway, uh, before we sign off, do you want to plug your stuff? Yeah, actually, Edmund, um, over here on YouTube, I do a video every single day of the week. That is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at noon Pacific time. So GMT for those of you out there who actually look at your uh, time zones. Um, It's gameplay videos. I do basically long plays. Every once in a while I'll do edits on them. Not always. They're just kind of goofy, silly, kind of low-key. 
Um, I don't have a whole lot of time to devote to that kind of stuff, so it's more along the lines of me just showing off a cool game, playing my way through it, meandering, getting stuck, getting frustrated, screaming at my computer a bunch, and then ultimately completing it after looking up a walkthrough because I'm only human. So, come on down, watch me play, listen to me be silly, occasionally watch me cry and give up on life, and then listen to albums with Edmund. So yeah, come on down, I'll see you guys around! <laughs> Uh, anyway, that's it for this episode. It's goodbye from me. And goodbye from me!